We're talking WrestleMania 2000 today, guys. This is, for lack of a better term, the unsung hero of the N64 wrestling games. It's the redheaded stepchild. It's the middle child of between three of the best wrestling games of all time, at least on the Nintendo 64, being WCW Revenge, WWF No Mercy, and right in the middle here, WWF WrestleMania 2000. Yeah, I it really changed everything, because another thing you have to realize with the WrestleMania 2000 on the N64 is what was out before this was Attitude, Warzone, um, In Your House. These weren't blockbuster games. In fact, they were laying goose egg after goose egg. They were good for their time. I shouldn't say goose egg. They were good for their time, but as soon as the next incarnation came out, it was obsolete. The other one was obsolete. Then the other one was obsolete. The other one. The, there was no playback ability. There was no backwards compatibility. They, they were backwards compatible, but nobody went back to play Warzone when Attitude came out. Nobody played In Your House when, you know, Warzone was out. Yeah, absolutely. Well, and, and that's the thing about these, these, these Aki, we'll call them the Aki games, right? Because they were, it was produced by Aki Corporation, published by THQ. Uh, but some would argue still that once WWF No Mercy came out, WrestleMania 2000 became obsolete. Now, what are your thoughts on that? Yes. Um, I, I think it did. But the thing is... It didn't change No Mercy to, excuse me, WrestleMania to No Mercy. The game got better. But it was yes. still the core game. It wasn't like you were going from WrestleMania 2000 to Attitude. It's like, what the hell is this? I got to do a short yeah. weekend to do like a, a drop kick. It's It was crazy. <laughs> but yeah. when you went from No Mercy to, to, um, to WrestleMania... Yes, there was more to do in No Mercy. It had the ladder matches. It was more polished, but there were also some things that were taken out, like full entrances. Like everybody threw a went crazy when AEW released their games. Like they don't even have full entrances. Well, guess what? Neither did No Mercy, but WrestleMania did. Right. So going from when you went back and you played it, if you had a buddy that only had WrestleMania 2000, it was still kind of the same game. It played the same. It looked the same. It sounded the same. If this came out now, No Mercy was DLC. Yeah, I guess that's fair because there wasn't enough tweaks. I mean, there were some some tweaks with the gameplay, but for the most part, you're right. It was new modes. It was new creative wrestler options. Uh, it was obviously a bigger roster, those types of things. Now, before we get too deep into the game, I, I want to kind of talk about, you know, the reason that this game exists as far as, you know, the event that it's based off of in the world of wrestling. We're still we're still riding that wrestling high here, you know, for for the last month or so with, with all the WrestleMania discussions. So let's talk about WrestleMania 2000, the event, because mm-hmm. uh, we've covered it before here back when the show was Generation S. Um, so real quick again, we'll kind of recap. Technically, WrestleMania 16, but they decided, obviously, with the word 2000. That was the big thing, yeah. right? Everything was 2000. Mm-hmm. So this was WrestleMania 2000. And I would say, I mean, some would say this was the peak of the traditional, the true attitude era during the Monday Night War. You could also argue that about next year's WrestleMania 17, X7. Yep. Uh, what are your thoughts? I mean, I know that, well, and we can talk about the event itself a little bit as well, but as a, like a, you know, looking at it from a match card standpoint, from a storyline standpoint, where would you say, I mean, is this the peak of what's considered the attitude era in your mind? Um, yes and no. 2000 in general okay. is, but not right now. Yeah. Austin's injured. Undertaker's injured. Right there, you're taking a okay. blow. Um, the match card ha- was just crazy. I believe there's only one singles match, and it's uh, Terry and the Cat, Terry Runnels and Stacey Carter. Uh, everything else is just multi-man tag matches and this, that, and the other thing. It, it is one of those... WrestleManias that I would like to be armchair quarterback with. Maybe we could do that one day on the YouTube channel. I think you know my other one sure. is WrestleMania 9. Is just it's a terrible show, but the talent's there on and off the screen. Right. It just wasn't that good. I mean, it wasn't terrible, yeah. but it was wasn't that good. Okay. Yeah, and that's so I I've never actually watched a single match from WrestleMania 2000 because I was not a WWF fan at the time. So I was I was a WCW guy and and even going back because it's it's really not considered one of the better WrestleManias overall. I've just never had a desire because there's really I mean, I guess from what I've heard, you tell me if I'm wrong or not. I mean, obviously it's a, your opinion, but the best match on the card is the Intercontinental Championship the, match the Euro Angle, the Eurocontinental. Jericho. Correct. The Eurocontinental title was Kurt Angle 
Jericho and Benoit, yes, right? Yes, that was the best match. And it was a it was a ladder match. No, it was two out of three falls, triple oh. threat. Oh, okay. Why was why am I thinking there was a ladder involved? Well, is that oh, a later, well that's, is that that's No, 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 no. You're thinking triangle ladder match. The Hardys did it. Okay, so basically different... TLC zero. Which, Got it. Okay, that okay. Yeah. I, yeah. It's it, listen, there's okay. the, the, the triple threat and the triangle ladder match are great matches. Yeah. But the main event was eh, just it wasn't a bad event. I think it was a very average WrestleMania. It's just the timing of it without Austin, without Taker, wasn't the yeah. best. But that triangle ladder match, TLC Zero, was great. Now, obviously, they were, you know, Taker and Austin were, were off the card before any plans were put into place for Mania. But have you heard, were there any, like, specific plans or rumors around if they were not injured, what they would have done? No, Austin was out for a long time. He wasn't coming back anytime soon. Okay. So there was nothing so for Austin. He really wasn't. In, yeah. yeah. I think, okay. in fact... I have no knowledge of this. This is just me, armchair, quarterbacking. I think they scrambled, and I think it was supposed to be maybe uh, Austin Triple H because they had built up to that. Okay. And last, uh, Rus- uh, no, the, the next WrestleMania, they built up Triple H and Steve Austin before WrestleMania. Right. But yeah. I think they scrambled, and that's why they had to bring Foley back out of retirement because Austin wasn't ready to go. And Taker... Taker comes back in the spring. He comes back at Judgment Day in May. So I think the next month. That's right, as the American Badass. I think he comes yep. back in, in May. So two pay-per-views later, I believe, because I think they probably had Backlash and then they had Judgment Day. So he was ready to come yep. back. Um, You know, Kane's in his prime right here. And I know sometimes Kane gets overlooked now because he turns into wishy-washy. But in 2000, Kane was... The character and the in-ring performance was great. There, there's moments. You could yeah, see yeah. why they were doing so good at the time, even without their A-plus players. And you could also see why at WrestleMania the next year, when they have everybody ready to go, what a full... Yeah, it's that much yeah, better. Yeah, what a full 2,000 roster can produce. And that produced WrestleMania 17. Yep. Yes, which, again, as we've discussed in, in our previous episode... Uh, considered the greatest special many of all time and for good reason so all right before we get into the game real quick what is your favorite match uh, in the wrestlemania 2000 card? oh the tlc uh zero that uh, triangle ladder match okay it's, so it is the hardys against the dudleys against edge and correct, Christians, right? yes or yep okay so it's a triple threat ladder match tag match for the tag team championships yep and then there edge and christian okay. wins the first tag team title win okay well, there it is. Fair enough. Mm-hmm. Um, and again, I never watched a single match in the card, so I don't have a favorite this time. I will Sorry. also say it's a um, good point to <laughs> mention the the entrance set, which is not not okay. what they use yeah, in the game. This was the first of like a big set. It wasn't like height wise, meaning extravagant. It had it had had the it had okay. the LED screens. It looked like a WrestleMania set. Well, and that's funny because, yeah, I remember because, like, I, I, you know, just been watching back through. I, so I watched Reliving the War on YouTube. Shout out Wrestling Bios because, of course, you listen to this, obviously. Um, <laughs> and not too long ago, he had reviewed WrestleMania 15, which he didn't really give it that favorable, favorable of a review. And neither have we, quite frankly. It's not considered one of the better manias. But even the set itself was very kind of tame compared to what i mean you look at wrestlemania sets in the last 20 years i mean they're insane um but back in the day and they really weren't that elaborate and so yeah you're so I, I, it's funny because again i don't remember the entrance ramp from wrestlemania 2000 so but i remember the one from the game and so obviously it had to have been bigger than the game it was well the one that was in the game is just the wrestlemania 15 set Instead of the X and the V behind oh. it, like it did at 15. Because WrestleMania 15, if you look at the sets from 15 to 16, you go, they went yeah. from a something ECW would have, to be frank. Right. It, it was just yeah. metal. Just metal WrestleMania yep. with the X and the V behind it. In the game, they because they didn't know what the set was going to be in WrestleMania 2000. So. Th- because uh, yeah, it's right. Because the game came out. Yeah. In 99. So I I don't have an issue. They go well. It was like that last year. Let's just do it this year. W- w- what it could look like, and they just put the letters two thousand behind it. I don't have an issue with that. Yeah. What it is is it's two long LED screens, and at the time it looked. I still think it's it's one of my more favorite ones. But it is it is a nice one. It's in No Mercy, ironically. 
Right, yeah. Well, because No Mercy came out, yeah, like a year later, essentially. So it would have been before WrestleMania 17, but after WrestleMania 2000, so they knew what the set looked like. So that makes sense. Um, okay, so let's just jump into it, man, because this is a game. Actually, funnily enough, this is the first of the THQ AKI wrestling games I ever played as a kid. Like, I had not played WCW yet, uh, and I hadn't played No Mercy. That came out a little bit later. Um, so this was the first one that I played. My friend owned it on, the, on his N64. I didn't have an N64 at the mm-hmm. time, so he brought it over or he brought over his N64 to my house with the mm-hmm. game, and we played it. And I remember the, the first person I played as. Who would you play as? China. <laughs> I don't know why. I thought it was really cool that I could play as a girl and beat up dudes in the wrestling yep. game. I thought that was really that cool. Which is... You know, but I, I, you know what I loved the one, the first thing I remember doing was when I was getting up. I remember hitting the low. Yeah, when you, you could stay on your knees and then you could, you yeah. could hold you up, which was a thing in games prior. But again, hadn't played any of them, so I didn't know this. You hold down the R button on the N sixty four controller, and then you, you for the right time, you whack him and you get that ding. And then the, you know, the the guys holding his junk and the crowds booing or cheering. I guess, well, I guess they're always booing. It's always considered a a bad move to do or whatever. Um, but what about you? So, like, when did you... Did you own this game? I did, right away. I got it. The black cartridge. I don't know if it changed colors. Um, this was the height of me and my friends doing backyard wrestling. So, oh, okay, the, yeah. the creative mode was... Again, the graphics weren't as good as the PlayStation because, you know, it's more blocky, but it was more simplified. With, like, the SmackDown games and everything? Well, we're talking more about attitude right now. Than anything, and my I, oh, I, I, I still okay, view so, yeah. attitude as like, you know, SmackDown's a whole other ball game. Like that could that's a game that was a right. game changer. Yeah, yeah. So it was easy to create ourselves, but you could like mix and match, and you know, it, it was fun. We created ourselves, and that was why we really liked it because you didn't need a memory card either. So if you went to your friend's house, you'd, he would just put right. up the game like, all right, I changed this, I changed this, and I changed this on my guy. I changed this on this guy. I changed that on that guy. It was cool and. You couldn't create a belt, but you could take a belt, and you could yeah. rename. You could rename, you could it. rename it, which That's was right. awesome. And I think everybody yeah. probably took the smoking skull belt because that was, you know, it, it was cool. cool. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it was it was cool. I really liked it. It was it's, it was great. And it's funny because that's a mode. When that's a mode that they took out of. Uh, no Mercy, the, the championship where you could create a championship and rename it and stuff like that. They, they did take some stuff out of No Mercy, which I thought was interesting. Um, you know, but yeah, so that's another th- reason why I think WrestleMania 2000 is is unique because it it had some of these these modes that weren't like create a pay per view those types of things. They were gone in the next round. They were gone, you know, in in No Mercy. Yeah, and No Mercy took it to another level. But I still like WrestleMania the best. But because the nostalgia is there of creating all these characters with my friends, and as we're talking about this, 2K24 yeah. literally just came out, and I'm still creating some of these guys. Well, and that's again, that's like one of the things that you and I have bonded over, or you know, over you know, the last almost twenty years, if you can believe it, is wrestling games, right? Mm-hmm. Like it, the first time we hung out was watching the Royal Rumble, and we played, we simulated the Royal yep. Rumble on SmackDown versus Raw two thousand six, down on your place in your basement on your PlayStation two, and then we just started creating. We, we both had dabbled in creating original wrestlers, and so we decided, how oh, hell, well, let's just create our own federation. And, and again, this is two thousand. I guess it was winter of 2006, so 19 or 18 years ago, essentially. And, I mean, gosh, we've probably created over 100 guys now between our different federations that we've, we've run together yeah. and simulated. And, you know, it's <laughs> it's not something I ever like to brag about with mm-hmm. people I don't know. But if I'm like, if I get on it, like, I get very excited yeah. to talk about the fact that we have. I remember one time, this is a true story. I had a job interview. And in the job, they're like, so what do you like to do for fun? So, you know, I play video games. And they're like, oh, what? yeah, we play game. What do you play? I said, well, you know, I play I play the wrestling games. So they're like, oh, nice. Yeah, we love those. I said, yeah, you know, I actually, me and my best friend, we've been creating wrestlers for, you know, 10 years at this point, And we just, we, we, we simulate matches and we do, we keep stats and stuff like that. And so there's a wrestler that you know, obviously, because we, we made these characters together. Uh, I created a wrestler many years ago called Tank Montero. And uh, he was just a, he was basically like if you're a wrestling fan, picture Bobby Lashley and Goldberg mixed, like thrown yep. together, right? That was basically that's what Tank Montero looked like, big old jacked up black bald black dude that's like a got a kind of a martial arts background. Um, and so I literally told the story of creating Tank Montero <laughs> in my job interview. Did you get the job? 
And I got there the job. Go. I got the job for the record. Yeah. For, and stayed there for four years. Um, <laughs> but anyway, the whole point is uh, we have bonded up this over the years. And it sounds like for you, this game was the genesis of that for you. The idea of, you know, creating your own characters and, you know, just having fun with it. Yeah, it was. And this was the. I guess it was easier because you didn't have the memory card involved. And it sounds so stupid now, but back in the day, it made things yeah. easier. And another thing is it had Titantron videos or moving images. That's right. It did. And that was a, that was a big thing. Cause, and, and, and again, to your point about the memory card, the reason why it's a big deal is because if you played WWF Attitude or WWF Warzone on the Acclaim, you know, the Acclaim wrestling games that were uh, they're dog shit. Maybe we'll do an episode yeah. on them one day, but they're terrible. Um, those you needed the memory card. And I remember because like my friend had WWE Attitude on N sixty four, and every time I would create a wrestler, I couldn't save it. You know, I just I would create him, be like, oh, this is fun. Every time I played it, I'd have to create the guy over and over again. And then like the next time I went to play it at his house, it was gone because he didn't have a memory card. Um, which I, it is. It's it's kind of ridiculous, you know, because. I, I don't think I ever owned a memory card for my N64, but did I, I feel like not a lot of games required a memory card, though, if memory serves. What, on the uh, on PlayStation or? No, on the N64. Well, no, no, no. I mean, yeah, they didn't. It was just a convenience that you could take your saved data and bring it to your friend. But on PlayStation, you needed the memory card. Oh, I see yeah, what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. Okay, gotcha. Uh, that's true. You, and, yeah, and to... to to bring that would be a pain because then yeah it's it's not yeah like once if you once okay. if your buddy lives like an hour saying. away and your parents drop you off there and you yeah. forget the memory card you ain't get you forget your PlayStation memory card you're not able to play the game exactly yeah. yep that's fair that's a good point it wasn't like it was stored yeah. in the cartridge so, and yeah. it also uh, okay, you know good just point. Th- these things seem so minute now I mean obviously with two K twenty four out or even in the last 10, 15 years it had entrance music and the WCW games yeah. on N sixty four did not so they, did they, not. they this was a big step compared to what you know aki and thq did with the wcw games you know the the entrance music the titan trons especially the titan trons on an n64 was yeah. um amazing. That was, it was still images right it wasn't like it was actual video but it was like like still images that kind of simulated that motion but again it was Again, talking about how you know this was the spiritual successor to WCW Revenge, it was. It was an improvement in every single way. Um, I don't know. Part of me still likes WCW Revenge just because I always loved the roster in that game, and I probably played it the most out of all of the old N64 games, other than maybe No Mercy. Like WrestleMania 2000, I obviously played the least, so I don't have the the nostalgia for it. Mm. Um, but let me ask you: Would you say there was a bigger upgrade from Revenge to 2000, or from 2000 to No Ooh, Mercy? Oh, that's a good question. I would say from Revenge to 2000. Okay, so and and there was there was a big jump there as far as you know roster size, entrance music, like all these little yeah. details and polish they the add trons, to it. The trons, the um, story mode, um, yep. creating a wrestler, all that. Yep. I mean, just think about that. You went Whereas, from cre- you had create a wrestler, entrance music. Titan Trons and a story mode. Yep. When you go to No Mercy, Which, all that yeah. is still there, and the big selling point is yes, the gameplay got better, but that should happen every year. Yep. The ladder match right. was the first of its kind, so that's always going to be the what everybody hangs the hat on. It's like that was the big jump. Um, yep. But in terms of, you know, the entrance music really didn't get that much better. It's still looped. No. The Titan Trons were still a GIF or moving videos. That didn't change. Um, yep. Yeah, I think the bigger jump was Revenge to 2000. Yeah, I, I would agree. I would 100% agree. Um, so let's, before we talk about like the gameplay itself, because again, there's people listening to this that have maybe never played an N64 wrestling game that won't necessarily know how amazing it mm-hmm. is. Let's, but before we do, let's let's talk about the roster because again, we, we we talked about how this is kind of essentially the era, like peak attitude era roster. Uh, you know, with with I mean, you had it, even though they're obviously injured for the actual event, Undertaker and Stone Cold, of course, are going to be in this game. Um, you know, you had you know Big Show, Triple H, The Rock, Kane, Mankind. I mean, w- I'm trying to think because you know this roster better than I would for this time period. Was there anyone left out of the game that was like, oh, I can't believe they left them out? Or was it pretty much everyone you could think of was in this game in this? Big so. Show. Wait, so Big no, Show was no, no, no. Show was in this no, game. Big Show was not in No Mercy. I'm sorry. He wasn't in No Mercy because yes. he was either injured at the time or whatever. He was in this game. Absolutely, he was. Um, I'm sorry. I got, trying to I got that confused. That, I, there were some surprises in this. Like Jericho was yes. in it. That was a surprise. 
Because he had just debuted not too yeah, long before. Yeah, he had debuted in the summer of 99. Like yeah. The, and, but they had, the thing is, they probably had all of his stuff from Revenge, it, exactly. right? Exactly. I mean, maybe they did a quick... So like that was and and that was the other thing that was really cool about this game is that you could create all those WCW wrestlers and make them look pretty decent yeah. and all their moves were in the game for the most part some of their attire parts may have been I don't yeah. know they weren't that elaborate um, and no I I know for a fact like some of their faces are in the game from what I've been like heard like you can go back through and find some WCW faces in WrestleMania 2000 because they just kept the files on the on the cartridge or whatever you know when they built the game and so yeah so someone like Jericho could easily have been imported in. You know, even if they just had to update his attire to make it his WWF, you know, tights or whatever, because he did. He switched his tights up a little bit when he mm-hmm. went over to WWF. Um, I'm trying to think. The only one I'm trying to remember, because again, I, I haven't played this game in so long. Was Goldust in no, this game? No, he was not. Okay, but was he around at the time or no? Mm, I, I don't, I don't think, think he was by 2000. I think he was in WWF. No, I think he was. Uh, he was on his way. If he wasn't, then he was on his way out. The blue, but the Blue Meanies in this game. Me. There's some random people. <laughs> uh, Meat is in it. Uh, That's right, Sean Stasiak. Yeah, Chaz is in it. When Mosh, the headbangers turn into turns into Chaz, he's in this. But were the headbangers in the game too, or no? It, they were totally no, they, separate. Oh, they, 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 Thrasher is in the game as a headbanger. Okay, Chaz is in the game as yeah. a non-headbanger. But I'm pretty sure everybody made Chaz into Mosh because if you're in the Attitude yeah. Era, the headbangers were a they were a popular team, not top tier team. They were the champs. Uh, no, but yeah. they, they were they were popular. They were, they were a good mid card yeah. team. I mean, they were like they were a true mid card attraction team. They usually didn't win. They would you know, and which is fine. But they were fun. Yeah, yeah. I totally remember that. Um, okay, so yeah, so they were yeah. So you're right. There are a lot of random. I think this is the first like Albert is in this Albert game for the first draws, time, right? Uh, draws Viscera Midian. Uh, yeah, because like, mm-hmm. And I guess that this would have been ministry. And that's and the thing is like this is the ministry taker, even though technically. Uh, he would be coming back very soon as the American badass Undertaker, yeah. and so, uh, yeah, it was it was it was a who's who. Everyone was in this game, yeah. so yeah. I mean, I would say, that, uh, but I can't. I would even say like the going back to Revenge for a second. As far as roster goes, I feel like the Revenge roster is pretty deep too. It is like this. These games in general get it right, and and the other thing too, we didn't even talk about this. These games are actually technically reskinned versions of a very like famous Japanese wrestling series called Virtual Pro Wrestling which was a you know a Japanese exclusive N64 game um you know that it, it's it played just if you were to find a copy of it, it would play just like this 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 series it was but it was all Japanese wrestlers yeah. um and even then the roster was amazing so these games have always had like you know stacked rosters where really no one's left off and if they were you could probably create a pretty decent version mm-hmm. of them pretty quickly yeah so Oh, great roster, great music, great Trons. Uh, let's talk about the gameplay itself because it's literally the reason that it's still. I mean, I think what I think we should do with this show is maybe at the end of the discussion talk about like, does this game hold up today? Could you play it yeah. today? Um, spo- spoiler alert: This game absolutely you can. Yes, like this game holds up today, and there's a reason. It's because this gameplay is so tight and. They've improved on it over the years. Like, there's a few more modern games that I think are kind of that play kind of like this. But you always hear about now it's No Mercy typically, but it's the same engine basically. Mm-hmm. But when they always talk about like wanting to create a game that feels like playing No Mercy, same thing with WrestleMania 2000. There's a reason for that because this game is easy to pick up and play. It's so smooth and it's just polished. It's tight. I don't know. I mean, for for my money, it's there's there's. There's not much better when it comes to like a wrestling gameplay engine for me. I agree. What are your I, thoughts? No, I yeah. I wholeheartedly agree. It's um, if to me it's a three step process: Revenge, WrestleMania, and No Mercy. And No Mercy is the end of that lineage, and it should be the best one. Yeah. But I think any of those yes. three are playable. I think that would be yeah. That, that I think that's that's the way it is. I think any any of those. If you're a wrestling fan, you would play any of those right. three games. Yeah, no, that's fair. Um, and, and you could. You could just pick it up and play. And that was the great thing, of course, about the Nintendo 64, again, was that it was four players. So you could literally... Now, did you... When you played this, did you ever play it with, like, four friends? Or was it always, like... Um, I, just, I never had four friends I th- to play It was with. mostly me <laughs> and one other friend at the time. But there was a couple of times okay. where, you know, a group of us in the summertime where we'd be out swimming or a party or something like that. And, and the party kind of wind yeah. down. You know, you're chasing girls at this time, so... No, I'm 14 right, right. years old, so you're chasing the girls in a good way, not in a bad way. 
Um, <laughs> now that they have cooties, you want the cooties. So, that's you know, right. when, when it's over, like, all right, come on, let's go play some N64. The girls are gone. You know, that that's how it was. Right. And there was, there was a couple of times, but it was mostly, you know, a, a friend or two here and there. Yeah. Okay. All right. But, and, and would you guys, would you play as actual wrestlers? Would you play as your own characters that you created or a both? mix? It, it, it was a mix. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, and again, I just I, I don't have the memories for this one like I do with the, some of the other games. But I mean, again, I remember I remember specifically. Actually, I'm trying to think now that I think about it. The first person I played at was not China. Oh, who was it? I played against China. I was Kane. That's what it was. Oh, because China just turned China turned on Kane. China was in the first match I played again. My friend played as China, and that's where that's where I saw the low blow. Never mind, she did it, and it like or like well, he did it playing as China, and it it like blew my mind. Like that was crazy. Yeah. So yes, it was Kane because I always loved Kane. I thought that Kane was like one of the coolest wrestlers ever, you know, because he had the mask on and it just, he looked badass. He was. Ah, so. Uh, uh, so did you have a favorite match type? Like, did you like the multi man matches, or did you prefer like singles matches? Uh, the Royal Rumbles were cool. I think everybody likes the Royal Rumbles, yeah, yeah. but it was very. Let's good. Let's talk about that too. Yeah, because that was a, a technically a new mode for this game. Because you had the Battle Royal in WCW, where you know you had thirty guys, but every time you threw someone out, somebody else would come in, and it was always one on one. This was like you had multiple people that would come in, right? I, I, I don't remember if I ever played that mode on this game before. So like, well, WCW, remember, like, was, their Battle Royal was a Royal Rumble. You, you would have guys come in. You would have four. Oh, I guess. And then, but then if one got eliminated, the next one there wasn't like a countdown. They would just come right out. Mm-hmm. So was it the same as this Royal Rumble yeah, mode? Yeah, it, it was. But it, again, it sounds so stupid. But the entrance music made it more fun. Yes, that's true. Because like that's in real life, if you're watching the rumble, like part of the excitement is when the timer counts down, you hear that music, you know, to see who's coming out. Which is, I mean, yeah, it's it's part of the hype. It's part of the, the presentation, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and so Royal Rumbles. Did you now? Did you play it where like if you're whoever you picked was eliminated, were you done, or would you pick up and play whoever it gave you for the next round? Oh and then try to win man, I don't know. I think if we were playing with buddies, you'd be like, no, you lost. Stop. Um, if I was playing by myself, <laughs> You're out? yeah, okay. I'm playing by myself, and like, yeah, I'll just grab somebody else, whoever else comes in, and then you would get somebody yeah, yeah, terrible, yeah. and you would just, oh shit, I don't want to play as him, and you would just go on the apron <laughs> and stand there. Come on, eliminate me, eliminate me, eliminate me. You know. So okay, well, let me ask you because I feel like these games, like even in with like WCW Revenge, like I could probably pick up and play with pretty much anyone and not feel like I'm like this guy sucks. Like, was there anyone for you that like in this game that like if you got that person, you're like fuck this guy, this is terrible. Meat. Really? Yeah. Like you just because you didn't like him? Yeah, as I didn't a wrestler, know who he was. I mean, like, I knew who he was. I knew he was oh. he was a jobber. Right, right. I got gotcha. you. Okay, so like you knew because of on TV, not because he played bad, because like. Again, they they all pretty much play pretty similarly. Yeah. From what I entered, you know, from what I recall, um, you know. So okay, so Royal Rumble, and then it would just be whoever you know, whoever you know won. Um, the, so the ladder match, no, that was no mercy. That was no mercy. That was no mercy. Yeah. The other thing was, I think this one had a cage match too, it did. right? And how was? That? I mean, was that anything special or? Wait, did it have a cage match? I'm trying to think. I think it did. No, it did. Because in the intro, they show it. It did. It was the. Uh, and it had. It was yeah. the black version of the cage. So that was. That's right. Yeah. Pro- more than likely, this is from um, the Saint Valentine's Day Massacre match between Austin and Vince. Was that the first time the black? I think cage that was debuted? the first time the black cage debuted. I th- oh, think wow. there was a no. There was another one, but it might have been a blue one. I remember there was a triple threat match between Rock. Foley and Shamrock right when the Rock started to turn face um, okay. the first time the very first time kids don't understand now the right. Rock's a bad guy the rock, best Rock is bad Rock um, absolutely he is I don't know either that was I know it wasn't the mesh cage a traditional cage so that triple threat match yeah. to me was either the last of the big blue or one of the last of the big blue ones or was the first black one okay okay yep so one of the things I love about you know the gameplay again, if you've never played an AKI and uh, sorry, is it AKI or Aki? What how how have you said Both. it? Both. I said AKI. You, yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, I've said AKI. I've said Aki. Whatever. We'll, I think people call it Aki. So anyway, so if if you the point is if you've never played an Aki wrestling game, you know, 
to to talk about like the control scheme. It's so simple, but it's so deep. So basically, you've got a strike button, which is B. You've got a grapple button, which is A. If you hold down either of those buttons, you do a stronger version of those grapple or attacks. Uh, and then it, in the grapple mode, you've got different. You can flick the arrows different ways with the A or B buttons to do different grapples. So it's a pretty like deep tree of like once you lock in one, you it, it kind of branches off into other options that you could do, and you know so on and so forth. And so you've got that. You've got the running with you know you hit C down, which I always thought was interesting. It's funny because you know again they've tried to replicate having that run button be accessible without having to like move your fingers around too much. I don't know. What were your thoughts on using? Because like, I feel like not a lot of N sixty four games figured out how to properly use the C buttons. Right? Yeah. Like, what were your thoughts on like using him in this game? Because like, really, it was just for run and target. I'm trying to think. Run like, and target. That's what it was, right? Yeah. Yeah. And I think so, he had like, a weapon too. I, I think. Okay. Is that what I think? It, I, I can't remember. I definitely yeah. know it was to I, run and to, and to grab your and to uh, run and target. I mean, that's what I liked. It was a targeting system used. I believe the right uh, yellow button. Which I was think so, so and good. that was even in, re- yeah, even in Revenge you had that, and it worked pretty well. I remember, yeah, I basically would just like cycle through whoever you're looking at, but you your body would like you would you could tell who you were looking at, which is really good, especially in those you know those multi man matches. Um, so you know, again, it's it's a really easy system to pick up, and then my favorite thing, especially after coming off of WWF Attitude, was how you could pull off your finishing moves. Yes, because in WWF Attitude, like you said, like you, you don't have to rem- memorize a Shoryuken to pull off sweet chin music from Shawn Michaels. Like, no. What's great about these games is that you, all you have to do is strong grapple them, and then you flick the joystick. What's now? I, let me back up. You can't just do it at any yeah. time, right? The other thing about this game that I loved was that you didn't have a health bar, and that was another difference between this and like the the acclaimed wrestling games was that theoretically you could be getting your ass kicked, and you start hitting some moves all of a sudden momentum's on your side it truly was a back and forth you know fight whereas in attitude like once your health was down and you got knocked down you're, you're getting pinned you're done right it was yeah. more like a, a traditional fighting game whereas this was like no 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 you like you if, if you start you know if, if the guy's hitting moves on you yes you're gonna start to to feel it but you you pull off one or two good moves all of a sudden you know momentum is back on your side and you can you can win that match i mean that happens all the yeah. time in that game um it's not you know it's not like a one-sided affair but the, the whole point being is that you basically had to build up your spirit meter and then once you do you flick the joystick uh and then all of a sudden you've got your special and it's like a very limited time you can pull off your special as many times as you want to within the time limit depending on the move you probably couldn't do it more than twice usually um but all you did was grapple your opponent flick the joystick and then yeah. boom that's finishing. another thing. And that goes back right. to the days of the Super Nintendo games. That finishing maneuvers were so hard to pull off. It was like I shouldn't yeah. need to go on game to reading Game Pro how to do the tombstone. Right. And and they yeah, that's the thing is even like you said, like in the earlier console games, they treated them almost like fatalities in Mortal Kombat or like a special move in, you know, uh you know, Street Fighter. Wrestling is different than fighting, right? As far as, like, no, you have to, like, matches end with a finishing move. Like, that's just how it is. Like, can you imagine, you know, if Hulk Hogan won a wrestling match with uh, a body slam, right? Or whatever. Like, it's, no. Or Stone Cold won with a Luthez press or, like, a, a punch, and then he pinned the guy. No. Every match should end with a finishing move. That's just how it is. To the point where I... <laughs> Did you? So let me ask you: When you were wrestling your friends, did you ever try to pin before hitting your finishing move <laughs> in the backyard wrestling? No, no, in 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 the game. Uh, of course I did. Because you, you would try to win even without yeah, hitting your because that's a competition now against a computer. No, get the get the finishing move okay. off. Like you. <laughs> but like, so I would if I was playing against my brothers or whatever. I would like. No, I'm not going to try even pin unless I hit my finish on them. <laughs> so. Um, but there was, and that was the cool thing too, is that there were so many different variations of finishing moves depending on who your guy was. Mm-hmm. So, like, if you're a Stone Cold, front grapple, stunner, great. If you're the Rock, if I recall correctly, you could do it where the guy was laying on the ground when your special was up, and that's how you hit the people's elbow. I right? don't think, I don't think, I think the people's elbow was just a regular move. It was just a regular move yeah. in that game. Okay. Like the choke, so like the that, choke so slam that. for Undertaker and Kane was strong grapple down. There's a choke slam because because they had because they use the tombstone as their main yeah. finisher, which yeah, you know, okay. Because I'm thinking back again, it's WCW DDP. Revenge, which by the way we have done a deep dive discussion 
on WCW Revenge way back in the day. Maybe we'll bring that out of the vault again soon because that was a fun episode. Yeah. We, we, we talked a long time about that. But yeah, so t- to your point, Diamond Dallas Page, you could hit the diamond cutter from basically any grapple position that was in the game. Like whether he was running at you in the corner, behind, front, didn't matter. There was some variant of the diamond cutter, which I thought was amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, but no, I loved... So you hit the finish... You go for the pin, whatever. I mean, depending on how you know how badly the guy was beaten down. If you hit your finish, it's probably going to be over. You could also win by knockout, where you knock the guy out. Um, you know, with with different moves. And, and again, I don't remember. I remember in WCW, like there were certain moves that like you, you always had a chance to like knock the guy out by hitting him. Was there anything like that in WWF at or WrestleMania? Do you remember? Or like it, there could be a knockout possibility. I, I don't recall anybody that had a move. That really did it, like DDP did in Revenge, right? Yeah, I don't. I okay, don't. so maybe they maybe they fixed it. Maybe that was an because people were spamming it. Maybe they took it out on purpose. I don't know because um, that that was the thing in, in WCW Revenge. DDP had like a running punch that would knock your guy out, and you could spam that. Or uh, Glacier had his crayonic kick that could knock you out. So maybe Shawn Michaels' Sweet Chin Music did. I don't know. I don't. I don't remember playing as him really. But um, so maybe that was one. Um, Oh god, it's just so fun. And so, did you have a favorite finishing move that you you would pull off? Yes, for a guy? Like that you yes. Cool? Okay, this is okay. so random. Ready? Because somebody uses it yeah. now. Kind of. It's more like okay. a signature move. Okay. Uh, Sami Zayn uses this. Val Venus used this. The Blue Thunder Bomb. It's a back. Oh yeah. It's like a back suplex, but they spin you around to like a sit out power bomb. For some reason, I love yes. that move. And that was Val's finish in the game. It was one of it was his because um, his finishing move was his, his standing yeah, it was grapple a standing finish. grapple from behind, I think. Yeah, because his finish was a diving, the money yes. shot, the splash yes. off the top rope. Because yep. he didn't way really have better a, than the a, Uso a splash. Yeah, the Uso well, splash is garbage. <laughs> Back in my day, splashes were better. Yeah, you know? and then then our parents would turn around, our fathers would turn around, like yeah, well Jimmy Snooker says hi. Oh my! Now see, I see. I, I think people have done the splash better since Jimmy Snuka. No, I'm just saying. Like we were saying, Val Venus yes. did it better than Jimmy Uso, <laughs> and our fathers would say, "Well, yes. Jimmy Snuka did it better than Val Venus." And then his father said, "No, Abraham Lincoln did it best." Yeah. So you know. <laughs> oh man, uh, I feel like in future episodes we're gonna be able to dive deeper on a lot of these games. But I'm trying to think: is there anything else about this game that we haven't talked about yet? I feel like we've covered a lot of it. I, the road to WrestleMania, you know, was a story. Was, okay, let's talk about that. Yeah, because I, I never played it, so I don't know anything about it. It was you got to pick your own character, or or created character, and you went through okay. a story mode. And it was you know it was N sixty four, so there was no dialogue. Everything was via text. It was good. Yep. It took about you know six, seven, eight hours to to do it. And there was twists and turns, and yeah. HBK was an unlockable character in this, so that made it fun to everybody try to get that. Um, so was Cactus Jack and, and Dude Love. You know, you can have a triple okay. threat match with the faces of Foley, which was amazing. But the road yeah, to yeah. WrestleMania was 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 fun. Um, another small thing about this that was fun is if there were um, characters, you know, in the intro. You know, they showed you Steve Austin, showed you Undertaker, but some of them when we were goofing around, you would change their attires. You would also change their appearance in the intro. Oh, that's right. Yeah. WCW did the same thing. I remember yes. that. So yep. if you really wanted to be silly, you would change the appearance of a character to one of your created guys. And then your created superstar oh, yeah. would appear in the intro. That's pretty yes. cool. Yeah. Oh, I love customization stuff. Yep. So much. That's why we got 2K24. Um, mm-hmm. So, all right. So back to Road to WrestleMania. So was it because I know No Mercy had a pretty good story mode. This was not anything like that, right? Where it was like, was it branching paths? Was it like pretty linear? It was like pretty linear. It was pretty linear. No Mercy. That is another thing that No Mercy did better, improved on. Yeah, it was, it was linear. Story. I mean, it was not linear. Yep. You could there's different paths you could take. Right, and then you mentioned the other thing that was really cool about this game is that it had a lot of unlockables as far as characters. Now. Did it have like create like could you buy create a wrestler parts and stuff in no, this game or was that was a no just mercy a, thing? No mercy okay. at the SmackDown Hotel and uh, SmackDown Mall. Excuse or me, the, that's right. And you unlock yeah. characters. Diggity yes. Um, yeah. <laughs> this not 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 so much. 
Okay, but it would be, there were wrestlers like you said that you could unlock, which again was was even because uh, there were some wrestlers that you unlocked in WCW Revenge. But again, the story mode for that was not wasn't even a story mode. It was like a gauntlet like fighting game style where you just you beat a bunch of wrestlers and fought for the title and that was it. And then if you you know, and then I think for each championship you unlocked a wrestler. Uh, so it sounds like yeah, there's more you could do in uh, WrestleMania 2000, which is awesome because yeah, it's that was another big improvement over WCW. It was. It was. Everything everything across the board was better and improved. In, there's nothing in Revenge that was done better in that game than in WrestleMania 2000 that I could think of. Can you think of anything? There's one thing, other than the roster itself, if you're a WCW person, but that's subjective. Yes. Um, I would say the one thing that WCW had more of was fighting styles, yes. from what I remember, yes. for wrestlers. Like, you had the Giants... You had uh, the regular grapplers. You had, but then you also had the cruiserweights. And there's really no cruiserweights in WrestleMania 2000. So these guys that you could literally run up the turnbuckle and then hit a flying move. Um, and then you also had the strikers, right? So you had Glacier, Goldberg, Eric Bischoff, where like if you locked him in and hit a certain button combo from a grapple, you would have the combo system turned on, where you could hit like six different striking attacks and then knock them down. It was more kind of that MMA approach, which would have been perfect for a wrestler like Shamrock. Yes. But I don't think that system was in. Was that system? I don't in think it was. I don't before? think it was. I don't think it was. So I think that's one thing that Revenge actually beats out on uh, WrestleMania with is is the different fighting styles. I agree. But, yeah, no, no, that's that, that's true. And you had the characters. You had Steve Blackman. You had Ken Shamrock. You had guys that could have used yeah. that. Yep. Now, one thing I do love that they did in No Mercy was they made the fat guys like super heavyweights. You couldn't lift him if you were a certain weight class, and I loved that. I thought that was fantastic. And you had to like remember tap the button really yep. hard to like pick him up and slam him, and it was like a big deal. So I remember that. I thought that was fantastic. Ah, oh, man. I want to play. That's. I wish I could play this. I mean, I could. I could go get an emulator and, and play it, but it's not the same. And I'm not playing by yourself as like a grown man is not as fun. Mm. Like, I feel because like, we have it. We've we've you know we don't live near each other anymore. But like you know, anytime we've gotten together, we've busted out a No Mercy or a, a Revenge or whatever. Remember that one time when I had that work trip in New York and we were in yeah. the hotel and we bust we turned on Revenge. We're like, let's just go unlock all the titles. Let's do it. Let's let's. Let's be. I think we won the U.S. title as like Mister Perfect or something like that. Remember that? It was just a ton of fun. Absolutely. Oh yeah, yeah. I do remember that. Yeah. What uh, What year was that? Times. Do you remember? What's What version? It was 2015. Yeah. It was 2015. So no, we were well, we were playing Revenge. We we're playing it on my laptop though. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Oh man, good times. All right, man. Well, listen. Before we, uh, there's a couple. Of, so, what I want to do on these episodes now is, you know, we talk about the game. You know, when it was released, this game came out in October of 1999. Um, so, I want to share a few other little uh, pop culture factoids about October 99. But before I do that, anything, any final thoughts on WrestleMania 2000? It doesn't get the recognition it deserves. I agree, hundred percent. It does. It hundred percent. It does not. And everybody goes with No Mercy is the golden child, and I get it. And then they go, well, that's the golden child, and revenge. Like, oh, that was so great! It it, it made everything good. WrestleMania 2000, yeah, it doesn't get any love. I feel like it gets. I feel like revenge gets more love than WrestleMania. I do because if someone's going to choose, so let me ask you this: If and I think I came if I already asked you in this episode, if you had to choose between WrestleMania 2000 and No Mercy to put in your N64, if you had them both sitting in front of you, 2000. Because of my nostalgia. You would. Because I know, but I can admit it's because of the nostalgia that's attached to it. That's okay. like if you ask gotcha. me which is my favorite Royal Rumble, my nostalgia for being at WrestleMania 20 is going to outdraw everything. But I could say this. my I prefer WrestleMania 2000 and WrestleMania yeah. 20 because of the nostalgia. I can take away the nostalgia yep. and say, no mercy is a better game. WrestleMania okay. 17 and 21 are better WrestleManias than WrestleMania 20. I just have yep. an extra layer attached to it. Okay, so it's a nostalgia thing. Now, and again, it's one of those where you're not going to lose either way. No matter which one's going in your system, you're going to have a good time if you like these kinds of wrestling games because they're both fantastically put-together, built 
polished games. They're amazing. So you really can't go wrong. Uh, I would say I probably, I guess for opposite reasons, I played No Mercy more, so I probably would go No Mercy as well because it's also when I sort of started watching WWF wrestling was right near the end of WCW's lifespan. I, I dabbled a little bit in it, and so uh, there were wrestlers that I recognized from WCW like Chris Benoit, Perry Saturn, Eddie Guerrero, Dean Malenka, those types of you know character, and of course Jericho. Um, you know, so uh, yeah, I, I probably have more nostalgia. I probably the most nostalgia. Like if I had to choose between Revenge and WrestleMania 2000, I'd probably go Revenge, um, because again, that's the one I played the most out of all of the the Aki wrestling games. Yep. All right. Well, listen. Let's. Uh, I don't know what it's going to be called yet. I'm sure I'll think of a clever title down the road. But for right now, let's talk about some other significant moments in pop culture history as it relates to October of 1999. Uh, in the world of music, uh, Sting was in the the music uh, music news, but not that no. Sting, the singer Sting. Yes. No. Not, n- okay. I was hoping. No, no, I got it because I'm thinking about our Truth's uh, <laughs> tweet where he said Sting's retiring, and it was a, it was the singer Sting. <laughs> Our truth is a national yes. treasure. That's right. So anyway, so the the singer Sting had just released a brand new album called Brand New Day, and it came out actually in late September of 1999, but gained significant popularity throughout October, uh, and included hits such as Desert Rose, which uh, would go on to become one of Sting's most famous songs, uh, because of its. Uh, I, don't, I don't. Did you ever listen to Sting? No, was the Sting? Did you? No, same here. Okay, so, but apparently, a very popular song due to its distinctive fusion of pop and world music. So, go mm-hmm. there, uh, go music. Uh, in the world of film, uh, the movie Fight Club came out in October of 1999. Uh, you're not supposed to talk about that. That's right. That's the first rule. Yeah. Did you ever see the movie? Yes. By the way, did you, have you seen yeah. Fight? Okay, you have. What are your thoughts on Fight Club? Um, it's it was. I mean, at the time, it was great. I think yeah. it's aged pretty good. But I mean, still okay. people our age still say, you know, first rule is, you know, we'll talk about it. Yeah, right, right, yeah. right. Yeah, I, I, I would. Agree. It's one of those where, like, I had a friend loan it to me. I was working actually. I was working at the shoe store, <laughs> okay. and um, and uh, our coworker Andy said, "You never seen Fight Club?" I said, "No, I never seen Fight Club." Goes, oh, I'll bring it in for you. So he brought in a VHS copy of Fight VHS. Club. VHS. I watched it. Yeah, and it was, I watched it on VHS because in my bedroom I still had the TV with the VHS built. Oh, in. that's right. I kind of remember that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that's how I watched it. Anyway, it was fine. I liked it. It wasn't... Look, there's people that, like, swear by Fight Club. Like, it's their mantra. Like, you know, like, if you go on their Facebook, it's literally just pictures of Tyler Durden and pink soap. And I'm like, nah, I'm good. That's fine. Uh, but, you know, it's considered a cult classic and is re- widely re- regarded as one of the most significant films of the 1990s. And I would absolutely agree yep. with that. Uh, in the world of TV, in the world of sci-fi TV to be specific, the show Roswell debuted oh. in October of 1999. Did you ever see that I show? I did not. I did not. I've heard of it. I've heard of it. I've heard good yeah. things about it. Um, it's kind of a blend of science fiction with a little bit of teen drama. Mm-hmm. It uh, debuted on the WB. Oh, so there it is. Oh, I mean, shit. <laughs> wow. That should take you back. Yeah. Uh, and it followed the lives of alien-human hybrids living in Roswell, New Mexico, oh, and uh, developed a pretty loyal fan base over its three the seasons. WB. So that was the epitome. Of the, uh, the WB, man. But, that's, but in uh, New York, it thing. was still called Pix 11. It never changed. It oh, was really? Always okay. It said, I only ever knew it as... That, well, because even where I lived in New York, it was the WB. Yeah. Like, it never changed. Well, Metro New York, it was, it was what Pix. Was it? Before that, it was, I think, called the Family Channel. Okay. Where I lived. Oh. So, anyway... So if you're listening to this and you remember the Family Channel, I think that's what became the WB, which is then became the CW, I believe, right? No, then, UPN or, became no? the CW, which became my TV, oh, okay. which became I don't freaking know anymore. Who knows? Yeah, that's, the only reason I knew it was UPN was because SmackDown was on UPN. That's how I knew of UPN. But uh, and then here we go uh, to wrap up in the world of sports. Uh, you know, pretty significant time of the year in October. Of yes, course, you're the uh, you know the heat of the postseason for Major League Baseball. And in 1999, of course, the New York Yankees would go on to win the World Series. Do you remember who they beat? They beat the Atlanta Braves. Take it, punk, for nothing. <laughs> you're absolutely right. And they captured their 25th World Championship, uh, continuing their dominance in the sport of professional baseball for at least a couple more years. A couple more years. A couple more years. So. All right. Well, listen. That's uh, that's episode one of backwards compatible in the books, Lou. It was fun. I think, I think it was. Uh, a, I think it was a good topic to segue from the brand extension of Generation S, going from our WrestleManias. Yeah. Um, 
and we yeah. got some more stuff. Well, and, and that's the thing, guys. So Generation S is not going away. No. Um, we still have our Generation S YouTube channel, which we are going to be uploading these podcast episodes to. So Backwards Compatible will be a part of the Generation S brand on YouTube. Uh, it's staying on the same feed. So if you want to go back to the, in this feed and listen to old Generation S episodes, they're there. They're not going away. This is not like a, a reboot or whatever. This is a like like you said, Lou, this is a brand extension. We are we are breaking out additional conversations in the world of growing up in the 90s and early 2000s. We're just focusing on video games because, quite frankly, I could talk every week about a fun video game and, and just have a blast like we did today, and that's what we're going to be doing going forward. So uh, next week we will be back with another video game. I don't. Do we want to give it away? Do, do you want, yeah, I mean, we I should. I think. Okay. What are we talking about next week? We're going to talk about Star Wars Battlefront 2. Original 2. Yes. Because... So the original one that came out on PlayStation 2, Xbox, and the GameCube? No. Or was it just... I think there's those two. No. I don't think... Just PS2 and PS2 Xbox. PS2 and Xbox. Okay. So, like Dan said, we, we, we try to pick something... Try to. There's going to be some weeks where it's just... Nothing really kind of lines up. This is the fun fact, folks. A little behind the scenes. So we were making this. Obviously, WrestleMania was an easy choice for us to pick, you know, WrestleMania season. Could have been a wrestling game, but yep. WrestleMania 2000 kind of writes itself. I picked Star Wars Battlefront 2 because they're finishing up The Bad Batch, uh, the animated TV show on Disney+. Plus. It's kind of like the yep. last of that Clone Wars era, even though they keep doing stuff. So figured Battlefront 2 would be a nice way to kind of tie it together because it's, like Dan said, the PS2 yep. era. But after we say, okay, we got our list. We're going to do all these games. Da, 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 da. Like a week later, the trailer came out like, oh, yeah, we're going to redo Battlefront 1 and 2 collection. And it's going to have online multiplayer and this. And then I go, well, that's good timing. Yes. Well, I was I was hoping you were going to bring it up because, I, yeah, I was like, if you're listening to this, the game has already been out for a couple of weeks. Uh, it comes out three days from when we are recording this. So I am very excited to be getting that, which which. I assume you're buying it. Which uh, what console are you going to be buying it on? I'll be buying it on PS5. PS5. Yep. Okay. All right. I'm going to yeah. probably grab it on the Nintendo Switch. But if you buy it on the PlayStation of... 4, we could probably play online together. And that's true. But I don't, know, maybe I buy it twice I don't maybe know, know, man. So. That's a game I feel like it's not, it's not a Nintendo game. It's not a Nintendo game. I know, but I just I love the portability. That's another thing I forgot Battle to talk about. not a portable with, like, game. Oh. That's not a portable game. Oh my god! It can be. No, it's, it's it'd be so cool. Oh no, god, big screen. Ah. Uh. <laughs> All right. Well, that's gonna wrap it up for this week, guys. Thank you so much for listening. And again, uh, Generation S is not going anywhere. We're still gonna be putting out some some fun stuff on the YouTube channel around general nostalgia for the '90s and early 2000s. And, and who knows? Maybe we'll even throw in a, a very special episode of the podcast here on the regular feed to bring it back to Generation S again, because if we are still Generation S, we are still the generation of the late '90s and the early 2000s. And so, if you like this show, though. Uh, and if you're, you're excited about talking old school video games every week and you know people that would be, recommend the show. That's the other thing, too, is I, I want to see more growth on this channel, and I think this is going to be the way to do it. I'm hoping it is because I know I'm going to have fun talking about video yep. games every single week. So if you know any old school gamers that want to get in on the conversation, have them check out the show um, at uh, Backwards Compatible. And again, look us up on YouTube at Generation S Podcast. Hopefully that's not too confusing. And uh, make sure you're checking out the merch page. The link will still be in the description below. You can grab some Generation S merch. And there will be, I promise you, I will be putting out Backwards Compatible t-shirts as well uh, in the near future. So make sure mm-hmm. you are grabbing those when you get a chance. And the other thing is, like Dan and- said, you know, with, we're not changing gears too much we're still gonna have you know moments like it, during the show we, we talked about pop culture we talked about movies we talked about tv shows if yeah. we want to take a deeper dive into something we're going to on our youtube channel that that's going to be the melting pot of anything generation s we're going to still yep. have if a movie comes out and we're it's not on the horizon and our on our list of games we're going to cover or it just doesn't flow with what our current agenda is we're going to possibly discuss it on youtube or uh, you know the Power Ranger stuff has been a hit. It's gonna stay on YouTube. If WrestleMania 40 is is good, which it probably should be, you know maybe me and Dan want to discuss that. We'll jump on the YouTube channel, just click the mic open, and like all right, let's just bullshit about it and see where it goes. So yep, 
And exactly. we, we can still take requests for those things. If there's something you guys want to see that's a little bit out of the current wheelhouse we're in, let us know. And we could maybe possibly do it on the YouTube channel. Absolutely. And uh, I, for the record, I will be probably creating a an Instagram page for Backwards Compatible as a separate page from Generation S. So make sure, you know, once I get that out there, you guys can follow us on there and uh, certainly connect with us on there, send us messages, things like that as well. Or, again, uh, comment on our YouTube videos, uh, you know, for anything we put out. You know, we, we love feedback on there as well. So, all right. Episode one in the books, man. I feel good. You feel good? I do. I do. I feel good. I'm ready. Well, we're recording. You said we're recording this before WrestleMania. I'm ready for WrestleMania. Yes, I am too. And, and we'll probably do a little discussion on that on the YouTube channel here in the near future. And until then, guys, thank you so much for listening. We'll be back next week talking Star Wars Battlefront. Uh, is it one or two? Which one do we pick? We're going to do number two, the original number two Star Wars Battlefront 2. Yes. Okay, perfect. All right. Well, until then, guys, you know the routine. We'll talk to you soon. Goodbye. Goodbye.